charter, 1604, uh, begin, uh, saying what their rights were. Now, the one over the hill, uh, by St. John, called the, the grandmother, came on, um, they uh, immediately changed the rights of the forest into a coal claim. In other words, in return, they were not taken with the, they were given so many sacks of coal. Grove, he wouldn't have anything of it. So Grove, uh, the wish for the people, carried on doing it. Now, the charter required them to do their customary dance to the cathedral. I, each year, the local village, like the village guild, would dance in procession all the way to the cathedral for the annual guild of service. Um, so that got written in there. That's one reason why I was dancing survived. Uh, it was not uncommon in the Salisbury area for the other churches in the Salisbury area also had this requirement to actually set to and dance at the cathedral. Uh, on the way to the cathedral. But it became, um, which we say, it was in fact made the first that they were supposed to do it. But it slipped out from restoration, which is very soon after the um, to the 29th of May. Which became the, the major celebration in the 17th and 18th century, certainly the same for the Union and Ship Shack. Um, and the fair grew up in Salisbury in the, in the cathedral close and then the law if you go to the cathedral, you've got to match that before that. And it got to the stage but 1860 or so, it got so enormous that the cathedral decided to stop it. Now, there were people in the village who were very worried about this because the charter gave them the right to the timber and wood timber only on condition they did the annual dance. So, four women in the village came up each year for the right day and they came and laid flowers on the water and they read out the charter, including the shape, grow, 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 all the strength and unity. And they did that up all the way to the back end of the 19th century. The celebration <coughs> carried on in the village, in the village, as a celebration, but there was actually no dance for a while. But then, just before the, the start of the city, about 100 years ago, they formed the Oak Apple Society. Uh, um, the men only start with it very quickly, then for the ladies. And, um, and they asked for the village women to do represent these four women who kept the, this far they was in the charter of life. And as a result, in a year or two, they actually started doing a dance. Because the procession of dance is signed with Tom. And they very quickly grew up and they started travelling in Salisbury. And they had the women dance outside the cathedral, then the old village would go to the cathedral for the a short service, reading the charter, and all shading, you know, really, really all the same. Then they go back to the village, then the village they have a sort of basically a fate. The marquee of the um, big playing crew, uh, the Oak Apple Club would have to say the dinner in that time, which means a lot of soul going. And it's grown over the years to be a typical modern carnival with everybody in fancy dress. Except that on a weekday, if the trend up a weekday, there's no audience. Process the way you You either dress up this representative sort of or you carry an oak barrel. So you see the procession of the band, probably some Morris dancers, a few floats, and then this enormous amount of oak branches for, um, coming along. So uh, it's rather fun to, be, to go and see it. 10 o'clock at the cathedral, three trials and two processions in the village. So it varies a little bit from year to year. Um, and the right to gather timber depends on how long you've been there. If you're a newcomer, you're allowed to gather timber from the wood in the dark. If <laughs> 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 you've been around a long time or several generations, you actually need to see what we're doing. And so on. It's all sort of fun. But you have a night call in song as well, where the gangs go around in the, in the dark to wake you up to remind you of the burden of the and need to be reminded. It's all sort of fun. So this, this particular dance that we're going to do now is going to rain 
for approaching a century on and off. Right? Um, what you have to remember is that the women do it twice a year. Once in the cathedral, once in the village. Right? Now, if you're only going to do it twice a year, you make the most of it. Which means, in this case, it's done incredibly slowly. <laughs> So the basic step is that sort of thing. Practically a walk. Right. Now, why have you got two sticks? You're two sticks. You're equipped, if you're one of the ladies of the village, you'd be equipped with a bow, about as long as a stick, and a bundle of faggots. Right? Yes, that's right. Yes. For the first figure, you put the faggots in the middle, then you put the bows in the middle, and you put the carry the faggots on your head. And for the second figure, you swap them over. <laughs> so, what I'm expecting you to do is to carry both of them in one hand, your right hand, on your head. Basically, you're carrying your
now actually link like that. One of you has to transfer your fabric to the other hand, otherwise it's painful. Oh, nice. 
next time we've got one, two, three, one, two, three, hook, caper, caper, come back up. For a half haze or a whole haze, normal Morris hay. And then you do the back step up and down the set, facing up all day, lunch field two.
Mrs. Casey, Mrs. Casey. Now for this dance, you need a pair of coconut pals. <laughs>
have to be, when they're imported, do they have to be carried in refrigerated ships or not? Because one of the problems we have is trying to discover when coconuts became available. There are no swallows. There are no groups of specialist coconut dancers on the stage in the 19th century. At a time when coconut was something weird.
one big ring round the room. And let's march at this speed. One, two, three, four. Thank you. 
they ought to recognise, you probably don't, that's the way we used to do it in England as an introductory um, tradition. That sort of speed. And of course, the speed in which you dance is related to the experience of the dancer. The problem of the beginner is they don't really have control of their arms and legs. And they do it by tensing the body. You know, in other words, they do it, is it were, by controlling the difference between two large forces to get themselves there. Which is why beginners get tired very quickly when doing the Morris. Because they don't know which muscles to relax, so they don't relax any of them. Right? And the tendency also to begin is that they actually respond better to faster music. You never call for uh, social dancing, you'll find that's also true. People inexperienced actually expect it to be fast and enjoy it being fast. Dancing slowly is an acquired taste. Right? Now the first one that we played was the 70 beats. Right? That's the same bit, as slow as you can get. One of the problems with rhythm, the speed of these things, is that when you get below about 82 or 84, it's no longer exciting. It's just one of those facts, you know, exciting music is above 80, and uh, sad music is below. And if you will, will insist on dancing slowly, you've got to put something into it to excite it for yourself and for the people watching. It isn't foot tapping when it's in high <laughs> speed. Uh, it isn't exciting in no way. You actually have <laughs> But let's have some try and dance. Go back to the same dance, but we do it at 96. <laughs>
over to Mrs. Casey, 6 8 tune, right? And that means it's a broken rhythm, you've got more time to get height in the movement. So we're not constrained. Let's try again. No, pick up from where we were. Chorus.
English music, as he said, is played is simple tunes played slowly, and then he promptly plays eight beats to the bar or sixteen beats to the bar and things like this. So that the underlying pulse is actually fast and exciting. So um, one of the ways to get slow music of the sort that we've dabbled with, you know, 70 or less, exciting, is actually put a lot of extra notes in while you play. Now the trouble with the hornpipe, which is these eight beats to the bar stuff, in fact it's got a pulse of its own. You know, whereas I think with the four fours and six eights, there's definitely a pulse that goes to the body. Here there's an underlying rumble that's going on through it, you know, which you tend to float along. And it's very difficult for most of our sides to dance in an exciting way to horn pipes. They, you float. Right, so the music is having a bit. Now we're going to try doing the same thing to a polka. Now a polka has an uneven rhythm. E yum pum pa ta dum pum pa ti yum pa tum pa ti yum pum pum. And the important thing is that the polka appeared after the Morris. Right? There are some polka tunes that are used by the Cotswold Morris, but really the Cotswold Morris predates that sort of rhythm, so it's not natural for it. Good try. Same wherever we were in that dance. Is that back to back? <laughs> Fits modern music. And one of the problems, there are very few modern tunes 
and by one in the last century, which actually have the emphasis in the right place to do cops for us the way that we feel comfortable. Which is why I think one of the reasons why when people create new tunes, they actually have to go back, sorry, you don't have to go back and look at old tunes to find something to fit, rather than picking, picking up something from the Beatles or something like that. And it's actually very difficult to find the modern tune that suits. The only one I've ever used is a fat eye bevel. Right. So you appreciate the choice of tune does influence the way you dance. And therefore, when constructing a show where you want contrasting things, contrasting the rhythms is quite stupid. And I like to preach that this is that the there is not much association between dance and tune, although there are some dances which you can see where they probably should do it. Yep. Um, it does mean you can play the game. You know, I was really organised a show we would say we do the size of that day to this type of tune to contrast with all the others. Uh, probably <coughs> doesn't matter for most occasions, but occasionally uh, you do need to have a quick with all of or you want to impress some Right. Now we're going to tie a few little on um, having to think a bit more type dust. <coughs> in Abingdon, for many years, they had this idea, which I'm sure a collector must have given them, that in fact, in real tradition of dancing, there was one, every note had a step. See? Which is all right when you were dancing, girl I left behind me. But provided the problem when we got to the main of the mill. So they said, you know, it can't be danced at that speed, we have to slow the music down. So it got the
standard dance, but to this step. Same for the dance, it's the dance we talk to. Oh, young daddy, one, two, dee, dee, dum, da, dee, da, da, dee, da, dee, dum, da, dee, dee, da, dee, da, dee, da, 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 Come on, the discipline we're looking for is listening to the music rather than trying to keep and think. Right? Reacting to the same. So, let's try it.
So that's what comes of actually trying to follow the idea of one note per step. Now, Sue can play a tune of 5-4. Are you going to get some money for this? We will discover if she can play this tune of 5-4, which we've talked about all winter, right? I think that last one was 6-4, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. yes this, it's strictly speaking 6-4. So you yeah. should be doing one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, one, two, three, four, hop. One, two, three, four, five. This is five, four. This is five, four. 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 Five,
hold you, rhymes and hide. Right, tonight step in. I'll keep at it until you do it. <laughs> Not really. Right.
months and months of film.
So I do one, two, three. But don't twist the fingers for the body too. It's much safer, really.
no dance rules or rivers anyhow in the first place because it's meant to be inspirational. And you can't be inspired if you don't know what you're doing in the first place. Right? So what I'm going to do is to teach you my dance. What I say my dance, the one that I know. Right? Uh, so its origin is quite strange because I went over many years ago to one of the folk festivals on the Isle of Wight. And I was introduced to a man who came from uh, Knife and Dance and Captain's Point who danced bagpipes over a pair of swords. Except that when I saw him, he danced over two passers. <laughs> I remember saying this in, in the Jubilee in the Bampton after the flower show. So promptly two men from the side who actually had vegetables in the flower show proceeded to dance over these very long parcels. So it's traditional, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I Change three and church. One and two. 
back from the right foot, you tap across from the next one round, and you push your weight over there. So now you're ready to go again. One, and two, and three, and four. One, and two, and three, and four. One, and two, and three. I've got wrong, haven't I? Did anyone notice where I went wrong?
Okay. This time we're not going around, we're trying to go across. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now that's a difficult one. If you're over punch, you tend to catch it with your heel. Right? It's not a dance for doing in heels. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now this is one figure where normally you're at the back and you exit round. This is one because you're doing this, you exit across. Some of the collected battle pipes use the same figure over and over again, or two figures over again, dancing from different positions. If you see the battle pipe figures published by Sharp under Headington, those figures came from Somerset. <laughs> and not the Headington dance at all. The Headington dance is actually described in Bacon's book. I correctly described the way the Kimber used to do it. You know, why, in fact, um, Sharp decided to publish that we don't know. But that's the one that's published, that's the one you see done by most people. Right? So it's diagonal, 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 cross, cross, cross. The more spring you get into the step, the better. Can we have a bit of music for practicing? Figure that's done with the heel. One, two, three, 
this time, you're reaching the end of the dance, and you are the stick so far. One, two, three.
18 minutes. <laughs>
back here says uh,